Hey everybody, welcome to Anime Break, your source for news on anime, manga, and video games. Well, let me phrase that, well we break down the week's hot topics in anime, manga, and video games. Got a little nostalgic there for a moment, if you guys have been uh, following me for a while, you know exactly where that's from, so. <laughs> Anyways, I'm Jason, and... This week we have talk about uh, Initial D, we have some new information about Miku's English voice, we actually have a demo of that to uh, play for you guys. But we're going to start off with Studio Ghibli, especially Hayao Miyazaki's uh, next film, which has been translated to The Wind Rises. And this is actually Miyazaki's, it's been a while since Miyazaki last directed a movie, the last one was actually Ponyo back in 2008. And uh, this movie apparently, like, like four or five days ago, was just released theatrically in Japan. So I look at this going, I really want to see this. I'm hoping we'll actually receive, you know, a theatrical release stateside courtesy of Aniplex or Funimation or Viz or somebody. Um, it, there's more more times that that's actually happening, so I'm very thankful for that. But uh, in the meantime, we have a brand new trailer for it. And enjoy. Yeah, so that is The Wind Rises. It's apparently did pretty well on the first weekend. I just looked it up right now. Um, on its first weekend, it earned 961 million yen, about the equal of just under 10 million dollars US. And um, it's actually expected to cross the 10 billion yen mark, or about 100 million. Uh, U.S. in incomplete once it's uh, shown all around the world plus box office and whatnot. That's for any other animation company that would be a lofty goal. But this is Studio Ghibli we're talking about, and it's kind of interesting that this is kind of like a bio uh, a biopic, not about um, uh, Miyazaki, but about um, Jiro um, Horikoshi, which is the designer of uh, Japan's famous uh, Zero Fighter plane. Um, I still find it cool, though, that the voice actor, I think it's his, well, it has to be his first main voice, uh, voice acting role, uh, for the main character is actually, um, uh, Hideaki Anno, basically known as the director of Evangelion. <laughs> so it's like, wait a minute, you directed Evangelion, one of the biggest mind frags known to man, and then you're going to play this soft-spoken character. Okay. Sure, why not? It's a Ghibli film. We're all going to love it anyways. So the moment we find out who is actually going to be bringing it stateside, and hopefully they'll actually create a theatrical release for it, I will let you guys know ASAP. Um, moving on to some information that was uh, at Comic-Con uh, last weekend. It wasn't all about you know Marvel. It wasn't all about comics. It never has been for a while. You got your sci-fi, you got your steampunk, you got... There's still some comic stuff there. But there are still some anime and manga announcements that come out of Comic-Con. So it's kind of cool to talk about those a little bit. Um, starting with some anime. Funimation. They came out and stated that, you know what? We want to license a, um, a popular series from back... Um, that's been going on for years. It has been released before by other companies, but we want to re-release them. So they announced they actually picked up a handful, or pretty much all, of the Dot .hack anime. Um, they picked up the rights to Dot .hack Sign, Roots, Legend of Twilight, and the uh, the GU trilogy. Now Funimation already has the rights to Dot .hack Quantum, which was a three-part OVA that was released uh, last year. So what I'm hoping for, because I do not have all of these, I'm hoping to hear from Funimation, yes, I'm sure they're going to re-release these on DVD, maybe Blu-ray, but I want to find out if they're going to release, like, a dot .hack pa package deal with all of them. It's the entire franchise. Well, so far. They keep on saying that it's over, it's over, but they said it was over before dot .hack Quantum, and then Quantum came out, so who knows? There might be a, a new one coming out in the future. I would still love to get a full box set of everything. I'm sure you guys would, you know, agree with with me as well on that. The only downside of something like that is it would be ridiculously expensive. Like I would say several hundred dollars. Something you would have to save up for, but something you know to work work towards. So there are some good and bad news 
uh, regarding with the uh, with these announcements. Um, talk about with manga. It's kind of sad to say that long running series Initial D, the manga's final chapter, is going to be published this month in Japan. This has been. I can't even remember. 46 to 47 volumes in the making. <laughs> I mean, the manga debuted way back in 1995. It's been going on all this long. It had several uh, anime adaptations, went on for a while. I mean, there was Initial D fifth stage that ran last year, which was actually a lot of fun to watch. There was the <laughs> the live action film. There was a few OVAs. I mean, this is a franchise that just would not die, but for good reason. It had every time you would think they would get stale, um, they can always bring out new characters and new cars, and you know the locations are the same, but they can always find some way to tweak the uh, the action a bit. Now, Funimation has released some of the you know some of the anime before, but that's not what I'm you know here to talk about. Yes, it's sad that the manga is actually ending. But we do know that there are not one, but two brand new Initial D projects coming out well, within the next couple years. First off, we know that there is going to be a uh, brand new feature film adaptation. And the, um, the final stage, which is currently serialized right now in the manga, will actually be adapted into a, a new anime series. So we are going to get a full conclusion, hopefully a uh, full closure of uh, the franchise in both anime and manga. So stay tuned for that. I mean, we're not going to get any information, it, not until the end of this year, I'm sure. I mean, as you can see, we're not going to get more information about the movie until not even, oh, I don't know, 2000, uh, December 2013, maybe early 2014. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But it's kind of cool to have some new Initial D coming down the pipeline. I'm really stoked for that. And if you guys haven't seen or even read the manga, do yourself a favor. Go to your local bookstore if they still have a, a, an a anime manga section. Pick it up. You can also pick them up on Amazon. There's other websites you can actually uh, watch the uh, watch or read online legit, you know, for either for free or for a low uh, low rate. You guys want to check it out definitely. And. Um, just out of curiosity, anybody still here uh, watch Toonami? I mean, I know I'm still watching it, and if I can't get to it, I'm DVRing it. There are some series that they have on there. I mean, some of the classics, uh, they have Cowboy Bebop. It's always fun to, if you're going to be up really late, or if you just DVR them like I do, you can watch some. sometimes, uh, for a while they had Tenshimuyo GXP, right now they have Inuyasha for an hour, kind of over the Full Metal Alchemist bit, but you know, that's always going to come and go. But um, this Saturday, there's going to be a change-up. Not only are... I, I forget which series are actually going away to make room for these two, but this um, this weekend, so late Saturday night, early Sunday morning at 2 a.m., the first episode of the English dub of Sword Art Online will be on Toonami. And I think this is a fantastic bit of news. I absolutely enjoyed the 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 anime. I enjoyed the manga. I've read the, the light novels. I'm hoping they would continue on with the um, the series, especially when they get to the third game. Uh, mild spoiler there, but unfortunately, the um, the original light novel author just semi recently released a remixed version, like an alternate retelling of the first uh, light novel itself. And there's going to be a corresponding manga, so I'm hoping, and he, this is the hope, that the powers that be will continue moving forward with the third game and continue on with the light novel series and the manga series, rather than going back and doing a remake. I've already seen that first game, I've, and I've already seen Alheim as, uh, online as well. I want to get to the third game, but that's just me. But yeah, you guys want to check this out. It's going on this Saturday night slash Sunday morning, 2 a.m. Uh, right smack dab in the middle of the Toonami time slot. You guys need to check that out. Um, some other news from uh, from Comic-Con. Let's, let's talk about Kodansha. They actually announced they picked up a few licenses, not to mention they're going to relicense a few other titles. Case in point, they're actually going to release uh, My Little Monster. 
Um, you're not going to see the these first three volumes aren't going to be available until early 2014. So it's going to be a while before that. They're still working on it. Uh, the next one is actually called Say I Love You, which if you guys have seen the anime uh, adaptation, it was actually quite funny. Um, I have yet to see Monster or read uh, Monster Soul. I know it's a lost classic. I, I, I'm i still behind on my manga reading. that. They're going to get that. And the last one, if you see in the upper right-hand corner, it's it's Holic Ray. And this is actually going to be... Well, the, Hol- the Holic Ray is not going to come out until end of 2013. Everything else is not going to come out until early 2014. So we have some time to wait. I know it takes some while to translate and publish and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for those of you who have missing holes in your manga library or just want to catch up as fast as possible, Kodansha is also going to reissue Clamps, Subasa, and Holic in 3-in-1 volume omnibuses. So you'll get three volumes of manga in one giant thick book. And you'll get those, unfortunately, again, not till 2014, but it's glad to know it's on its way. Uh, from Viz, they announced they're actually going to release the graphic novel adaptation of um, All You Need Is Kill, which it kind of makes sense. They're going to capitalize on the fact that Yes, Tom Cruise is making a movie based on the on this. Um, although they just changed the uh, the title to what Edge of Tomorrow or something like that. But it's kind of cool that Viz is going to uh, release this. Um, they're also going to release a Battle Royale essay book. Battle Royale. That's a series that also won't die. There's always either a reissue, a reprint, um, an alternate retelling. There's it's a series that just won't go away. Now, the funny thing is that all these announcements I was hearing from all, you know, from Viz and Kodansha and whatnot, were smack dab in the middle of 2013. And all these announcements were like mid to late 2014. I'm like, ugh. I mean, at least with like when you make an announcement at like SakuraCon, Otakon, Anime Expo, you look at those and think, well, at least those we can look forward to because they're coming out within six months. These ones are like a year. So, oh well. But it's cool that they actually made some announcements. They are going to be coming out. Um, On a side bit, you guys may not have heard about these before. Um, I only came across this by happenstance. And I need to pick up the entire set now. (laughs) Because there's a, a group called Mondo. They do some artwork. They do some vinyl pressings here and there. They've had this whole thing of does music sound better when it's analog, when it's on vinyl? And I tend to agree. You have a much more warmer sound to everything. And they're actually putting together a compilation of music from Studio Ghibli films. Um, This is actually, this one, uh, this specific um, compilation, will select music from five different Ghibli films and is actually uh, performed in full by the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra. So you have um, tracks from Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, The Cat Returns, and My Neighbors, the Yamadas. And um, they were selling, I think, pre-orders for this. They were also selling the the Howl's Moving Castle version at at Comic-Con. I saw a few pictures of that. But if you go to Mondo's site, just search for Mondo, M-O-N-D-O, you guys want to go there and pre-order this. Because this is definitely, if you are, if you have a vinyl collection, you definitely want to add this to it. And even if you don't, the great thing about uh, LPs and, and also Laserdisc to an extent is that because the media is so large, the cover art itself could be just put on the on your wall, and it looks amazing that way. So you guys can check that out. Um, the um, on the on Mondo site, it will be able to purchase starting July 26th in two days. So you guys can look forward to that. All right. Speaking of music, let's talk about uh, a computerized music, specifically Vocaloid and, of course, Krypton and Hatsune Miku. It was announced at Anime Expo. Well, they teased it a couple years ago in an interview that I did, and then they made an official announcement at this year's uh, Expo that Hatsune Miku version 3 of the software will actually include um, an English software package. And to help promote it, they decided to put together a demo song, and I'm just going to play a little bit of it, just to get an idea, like a taste of how well this is done. 
So we just had this get up and going. And I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, cool. It's about time. We know it's going to be around two to three hundred dollars for the package but that's about normal so let's see how this sounds Now, for those of you who are confused about what you're seeing on the screen right now uh, the vocal it's off the way it works is that you have you put your, your notes on the keyboard, the length, you can add vibrato to them or other different ideas to them. But it just goes all over the place, which is why sometimes in some videos you can you can follow it along and it's kind of cool that way. I would more prefer being a musician to actually have sheet music, but you work with what you got. Now, I look at this and I listen to this and it actually sounds pretty good. But my question is, why do they choose such a, a slow piece of music like this, a very slow, melodic piece? I mean, yes, you want to be able to understand it in, in the native English language, and which you can without actually reading the subtitles. But that makes me wonder, though, how will the English language sound if you do like a for lack of a better phrase, a typical Hatsune Miku tune where it's high, fast, loud. Um, we'll have to see. We don't we don't have an exact date about when this will be released, but I will definitely be picking this up and playing around with it here and there. I do like the fact that instead of going with a different voice actress, you know, an, an English voice actress to try to get the um, uh, the vocal database put together, they actually went back to the original voice for uh, the Miku software, uh, Saki Fujita. And she went through and in her English, I'm not sure how good her English is, but they got her to create um, the English software package. So we'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know when it comes out and maybe I'll even create a song or two. Um, moving on real quick, we have some news from Otacon. We've already talked about time and time again about the epicness of all their guests for this year, which I'm really bummed I cannot make it. For those of you who are going, please take pictures, take video, and um, post them online. I would love to share share them on the show. But it's not all about the guests at Otacon. They want to have some other great events, too. Of course, they have some fantastic panels, um, but they also have some great movies. And this year is um, no different. They made the announcement last week that they will screen... Not only Evangelion 3.0, you cannot redo, but also the live-action Roroni Kenshin movie. I think that's incredible. Now, I've seen um, the Roroni Kenshin movie a while back in theaters, and it was an absolute treat. I know it was actually shown at um, AX as well. I don't think Ava 3.0 was. I know Ava 1.0 and 2.0 were. So, the fact that they're going to show that there at Otakon, that's great. Uh, it's already been announced that the English dub of Mamoru Hosoda's Wolf Children will also be shown, or actually debut, at Otakon this year. So, not only are you going to be able to meet up with some fantastic guests, check out some amazing uh, movies, you're going to hang out with friends, you maybe even make some new ones. It's just an all-in-one package deal going on at Otakon this year. So, you guys definitely want to, uh, if you are going, enjoy it. If you aren't going... Just do this to your friends who are, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, before we wrap up, there's a couple more things we want to talk about. But in terms for video games, I have two different articles, but each of them have a trailer. Now, I will talk about both of them, but I also want to get you guys involved. And I want you guys to select which trailer do you want to see for this episode and your choices are actually are new information and a new trailer for lightning returns final fantasy 13 this is the comic-con trailer with some additional gameplay footage and whatnot and there's a new trailer out which is mostly gameplay for the upcoming ace attorney dual destinies destinies 
which is actually getting an M rating in the States, and I'll explain why in a bit. So I'll start off with uh, Lightning Returns, just talking about the news here and there, that the official PlayStation blog revealed several new gameplay details. We already known through multiple trailers that some of the cast from Final Fantasy XIII, or the previous game, such as State, are making a return. It's, le it's left to see if they're actually going to be playable, although I doubt it. Um, but, you know, Square Enix, they always, always love to do the massive limited edition packages. I mean, yes, you can get the regular game for 60 bucks when it comes out. But, no, they want to, um, yeah, they, they just want to spice it up a bit. So, they release the information on limited edition. This is absolutely friggin' incredible. This is the Lightning Ultimate Box Premium Set. This set will include all three games from the Final Fantasy XIII series. Uh, you also get the soundtrack with... Now, the thing is, it's the soundtrack with only selected tracks from the trilogy. I'd rather have the full soundtrack from the third uh, game, but oh well. You also get a pamphlet with the original costume designs. That's always cool. And then you also see there, yes, you do get a Play Arts figure of, uh, of Lightning. Now, surprisingly, I look at this going, this could easily be $500 tops. Um, yeah, it's actually cheaper than that. Buy about half. The box will retail for 26,000 yen, about uh, $260, $250. If you want the regular game, just, just the game itself, apparently it's going to retail uh, for a little under 8,000 yen, so about $75 to $78. That makes you wonder if that's the Japanese pricing, because uh, normally prices for you know, the PS3 games are usually about 60 bucks or cheaper uh, in North America. So Now, players who do pre-order the game will actually be able to unlock, for some reason, Cloud's Uniform uh, Band and Buster Sword as equipment. You know, all the stuff he was known for in Final Fantasy VII. I don't know how well that's going to look on a girl, but um, okay. <laughs> Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick was actually regarding Phoenix Rice, a Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. There's already been a trailers and announcements about we have uh, new characters, including a, um, a convicted prosecutor. So basically, this uh, is a lawyer who's serving time. He's been convicted of a crime, but he's still working as a prosecutor. It's kind of interesting. Um... There's a new trailer for, uh, for Comic-Con that they released. And, of course, you have Apollo Justice and Athena uh, Sykes to get to work. And what's funny is that all the previous Ace Attorney games, while addicting and enjoyable, they've always had a T for Teen rating. This one, due to the nature of the various crimes and storylines uh, in this series, this is actually going to receive an M rating. I wonder if, like, how strong, how... You know, how dark are is the nature of these crimes that the has to receive an M rating? I look at it as people who started playing the Ace Attorney series, for the, the most part, the, the main uh, demographic was you know young uh, young adults, you know teenagers, and it's been a few years, so they've grown into young you know to adults, probably eighteen and up, so they could probably handle the uh, the M rating. I still still think it's amazing, and it's one more reason for me to go get a Nintendo 3DS one of these days. So, between those two, looks like we'll go with... Ah, yes. We'll go with this trailer. Enjoy. You know, I look at this game, and it has the same feel and same problem as every other Final Fantasy game. It looks amazing. But sometimes the, and sometimes the story and the gameplay get a little muddled. Like, it took me off and on over two years to get through the first Final Fantasy 13 game. I'm not even done getting through Final Fantasy 2 yet, so... I look at this going... Have they fixed some of the problems with the gameplay? Is the storyline going to move forward? Yes, I know you're going to call this the final bit, but then again, the way the DLC ends in Final Fantasy 13 2, you could have called that the ending, so... 
I don't know. I'm about ready just to give up and go aliens and leave it at that. <laughs> All right. To wrap things up, you guys, if you were at Anime Expo and you were at the Good Smile panel, you might have seen um, Aki-san talk about, do you guys want figures from, you know, Attack on Titan? And the place went apeshit. Well, um, they decided they're going to start working on that and get some... Uh, <laughs> some promotional stuff out there. Let's get some prototypes out there as well. And what better way to start off with not scale figures, not figmas. No, we're, we're going to go with a titan that's 60 meters tall in the, the manga and anime. Well, um, they kind of shrunk it down a little bit. They released uh, these scans of <laughs> the colossal titan nendroid <laughs> and it'll even come with its own wall that, that hopefully you can actually break down <laughs> <laughs> i look at this and i'm going now i can only imagine that this is only the start of a slew of nendroids and figmas and pvc figures of many characters from attack on titan most will have maneuver gears so, with this little Nendroid and the wall, um, are they going to include, like, ultra-tiny little figures that are going to try to scale that and, and uh, beat him? <laughs> I still find it's, it's cute in a very odd way, so. We have no idea when these are going to be released. These, like I said, these are actually just early, early prototypes, but I thought they were funny enough to at least actually share with you guys. But I believe that's going to be it for uh, this episode. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Stay tuned for Post Show. If you guys always remember, on Sundays we have Our Mother's Basement, and this Sunday I'll actually be up in Ventura with Michael, who um, apparently is getting his own auto mail. And uh, you'll find out what I'm talking about on Sunday. So, um, for Anna Break, I'm Jason. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll uh, see you guys next week. It's